Hey guys, this is Red Peak. Today I would like to show you my solution for the problem 4 in India MO. So let me first go through the problem. We are given two positive integers n and capital M, such that capital M is larger than n to the power n minus 1. Then we want to prove that there exist n distinct prime factors p1, p2 until pn, such that each of them derives one of for m plus j, capital M plus j. Well, all the difficulties lies in this word distinct. So how can we choose these prime factors such that they are different from each other? So let's see how we handle it. Indeed, the idea is quite simple. If we take two numbers m plus j and m plus k, and we take the GCD, the greatest common divisor between them, then we can write it as the GCD uh, of m plus j and k minus j. In particular, this number k minus j is uh, between 1 and n. So the GCD between m plus j and m plus k is indeed very small, since m is uh, n to the power m minus 1, but the GCD is only n. So now let's consider one particular m plus j. So if we can find a prime factor which is larger than n, then we are happy because this means that among all these numbers m plus 1 and until m plus n, q is the only divisor of m plus j. So q does not divide other numbers. Then in this case, we can simply take pj as q, and necessarily q is different from other prime factors. So now we may wonder if this is always the case, we can find a large prime factor. Indeed, the knife will be too good if this is true, because we can always multiply small prime factors together to get a large number. So now let's consider the second case that m plus j is uh, a product of small prime numbers. Let's say q1 to the power alpha 1 until qn to the power alpha m. And all these qi's are smaller than n. In particular, this means that there are at most n minus 1 terms in the prime factorization of m plus j. But now remember that m is very large, m is larger than n to the power m minus 1. So by the pigeonhole principle, one of these terms must be larger than n. So we can find one qj such that qj to the power alpha j is larger than n. So one of these terms qj to the power alpha j is larger than n. And this will be the prime factor we are going to assign to n plus j. And the remaining part is to prove that these qj are indeed distinct from each other. Now let me summarize how we choose pj. So in the first case, m plus j has a prime factor which is larger than n. In this case, we will choose pj as this prime factor. Well, it might have multiple of them, we choose any of them, is fine. And in this case, by following the argument on GCD, necessarily pj is different from the other pk, because simply pj does not divide other terms m plus k. So we are done in this case. Now let's consider the second case that m plus j only has prime factors smaller than n. And so we choose the prime factor pj such that pj to the power alpha j is larger than n. And also the same, let's assume we have another number m plus k gives us the same pk. So let's assume that pj equals to pk. Well, by definition, pj to the power alpha j is larger than n, 
and also pk to the power alpha k is larger than n. So now if we write down the GCD between these two numbers, well, it is larger than the power, the pj to the power minimum of alpha j and alpha k, which is larger than n. So this is impossible. So this concludes that all the pj are different, and that's what we need. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.